Hey guys, welcome back. So, so in this video, I'm I'll be talking about um, monomine hypothesis as well as uh, certain treatments on the bipolar disorder as well as uh, depression, uh, depression disorders. So, uh, as for this monomine hypothesis, so they say that these mood disorders are mainly the main. I mean, like uh, the the hypothesis that can be used to study the facts about um, uh, this mood disorders. Uh, the the most famous hypothesis is this monoamine hypothesis. So, what does this monoamine hypothesis did is that this monoamine hypothesis suggests that depressive disorder is due to an abnormality in a monoamine neurotransmitter system, and three monoamine transmitters that are included i mean as part of this hypothesis are serotonin adrenaline as well as the dopamine so we will talk about all these three uh, neurotransmitters so the first one is serotonin so synthesis of serotonin in brain like mainly depends on the availability of tryptophan tryptophan um, is a type of amino acid and uh, it is found that uh, in a depressed patient, the plasma tryptophan are decreased. So this is suggestive that uh, serotonin plays an important role in the in the trigger of uh, uh, depression. Like a reduced level of uh, serotonin is going to trigger depression. Okay, the next uh, neurotransmitter that I'm going to talk about is uh, noradrenaline. <clears throat> it has been found that. Um, the increasing uh, when we increase the brain noradrenaline function it will eventually ele elevates the plasma concentration of um, adrenocorticotrophic hormones cortisol as well as growth hormone so when a study was done was done on the catecholamine uh, depression um, it has been found that it is possible to actually lower the synthesis of the catecholamines by inhibiting the enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase uh, which catalyzes the conversion of uh, tyrosine to levodopa or also known as a L-dopa um, L-dopa and this L-dopa is a precursor for noradrenaline as well as dopamine and drug that is used to achieve this is also known as AMPT or also known as alpha methyl P tyrosine okay alpha methyl P tyrosine so okay so when AMPT drug is used in the healthy patient it will produce sedation but not depression but when it is used in depressed people or depressed patient they become have they they are they will be showing uh, heavily depressed symptoms. Okay, so this is a function of AMPT drug. I mean, don't really use this, but um, you don't really use this in depressed patients. Just it will just make uh, things come more like uh, more complicated for them. Okay, the third uh, neurotransmitter that I'm gonna talk about is dopamine so dopamine okay dopamine neurons uh, in the mesolimbic system play a key role in incentive behavior and reward okay and those are the processes that are disrupted in depressed patients and okay what are the effects of the exposure to dopamine so when you have a short-term exposure to dopamine you will actually have a feelings of pleasure but then when you have a long-term uh, exposure to the uh, dopamine will actually have this uh, schizophrenia attention deficit disorder as well as a sexual desire like elevated sex uh, sexual desire so in vulnerable individuals it has been proven that uh, lowering the level of serotonin adrenaline as well as dopamine is sufficient enough to cause clinical depression okay so that's all for monohermine hypothesis now i'll be talking about the uh, if i'm not mistaken okay the treatment for acute phase of depression okay as for the depressed people we have a certain as, as what i have written here as like in the bullet form we have a certain type of uh, treatment for depressed people but in general okay 
we have a general as well as specific treatment the one that i have written here is specific treatment so as for the general treatments first of all we we would be focusing on the activity that means we we must make sure that the patients are actually occupied like well occupied with certain activities to prevent uh like a deprivation of social stimulation and uh, rewarding ex experience okay that could lead to depression and we also should advise them to eat regularly and healthily and um, so because uh, diet also plays an important role okay and uh, advice should also be given uh, on how to deal with insomnia so you, you, you see like certain depressed people they couldn't be able to sleep so you must like advise them on what to do to deal with uh, insomnia and stuff and that is from uh, activity perspective another perspective is uh, giving them help from psychological view that means we must always be able to provide support encouragement as well as repeated explanation to them that they are actually suffering from illness and not mental failure and such an encouragement is very important because those those actually those things actually give them confidence that they can actually overcome this and uh, yeah positive vibes always brings out the best outcome so those are the four general treatments for uh, acute phase of depression as for the specific treatment we have certain drugs as well as certain type of therapies so the first uh, one that i'm going to talk about is a uh, antidepressant drug treatment so we have a certain type of drugs such as ssri snri tricyclic antidepressant monoamine oxidase inhibitor as well as uh, followed by the all the electroconvulsive cbt intervention psychotherapy as well as couple therapy so i'll be talking about the ssri first so ssri they have a um, specific specific uh, serotonin uptake blocking effect that means it remains in the cyanotic cleft for a longer period of time and that would ease depression ssri selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor as well for snri they have the same effect as uh, ssri uh, but in addition they also block uh, the reuptake of re, uh, noradrenaline so that means noradrenaline also will stay in the cyanotic cleft for a longer period of time so because you actually have this noradrenaline for a longer period of time it can also be used for certain type of uh, to relieve certain pains and stuff like certain people will actually have this muscle pain and all this so it can also be used to relieve those pains but since you are actually like retaining noradrenaline they, they, this will eventually cause a sympathetic part with side effects such as tachycardia tremors and all those things okay the third one is tricyclic antidepressants so this one they increase the levels of uh, norepid norepinephrine as well as serotonin and also block the action of the acetylcholine and this balance can elevate uh, depression but then although they are much effective than ssri but they are less tolerated that means they have a lot of side effects that's why they are not really used and the fourth one is uh, the last one for the antidepressant drug treatment treatment is a monoamine oxidase inhibitor or meoi so they elevate the level of norepinephrine, uh, serotonin, and dopamine by inhibiting an enzyme called monoamine oxidase. And uh, monoamine oxidase are the enzymes that actually breaks down the neurotransmitters. So when you actually inhibit these uh, enzymes, that means the neurotransmitters are gonna be there, you know, for uh, in the synaptic life for a longer period of time. And these potential the effects of a naturally occurring pressamines, uh, pressamines, including tyramine and vasoconstrictors, and these are the things which can which can cause dangerous increase in blood, blood like blood pressure so that's why this drug is not used as a first line of drug okay the next one is electroconvulsive therapy okay electroconvulsive therapy of course will actually have a quicker effect but you actually have a higher amount of side effect for example impairment of short term memory and they are used for depressive disorder unresponsive to adequate drugs or uh, depressed patient who has high suicidal risk or severe psychomotor retardation okay the third one is cbt also known as cognitive behavior therapy okay this help patient to modify their way of thinking and acting about uh, life situations and depressive symptoms 
and these are better than antidepressant medication and it has been found that when you actually give this cognitive behavior therapy they become more adherent to medications and stuff so this is really uh, encouraged and the fourth one is interpersonal psychotherapy so the, uh, which is like a systematic and standardized treatment approach to personal relationship and life problems you actually deal with life problems and when you solve the life problems they become more like relaxed and stuff and the last one is also known as, uh, is also the couple therapy so it is given to patients for whom interaction with a partner appear to have uh, caused or maintained the depressive disorder and the aim of this therapy is basically to understand the nature of this interaction and change them so that it will eventually become mutually supportive so those are the treatment for acute phase of depression now we'll go for medication for mania as for mania we have three types of medication or treatments the first one is antipsychotics and these are used to manage psychosis that means uh, which includes delusions hallucinations or disordered thought and these are the these are principally found in bipolar patients so basically we have two types of drug the typical and atypical and it atypical has improved tolerability profile we are not going to go further on these things okay so the second one is mood stabilizers for example lithium and they reduce the severity and frequency of mania and help prevent future mania as well as depression and also other than lithium we also have a uh, valproate or sodium valproate and um, this one sodium valproate the onset is sooner than any mood stabilizers and the third one the most common one is benzodiazepine or bzd it is used in the treatment of the overreactivity and restore sleep okay um, it is used to relieve anxiety as well as the panic attacks and the mechanism of action is uh, it will affect a neurotransmitter in the brain for example uh, that principally GAB, GABA neurotransmitter so GABA neurotransmitter are the one which suppress the activity of nerves so okay basically scientists just believe that excessive activity of nerve may be the cause of anxiety and other psychological disorder and benzodiazepine reduces the activity of nerve by enhancing the effects of GABA okay so i'm not going to go deeper onto this medication and all i'll be doing a future video on this medication so that would be more like in depth and you would understand more about this medication i'm just like talking about the brief medication and treatment for this mood disorders on this topic it's not supposed to be here but i'm just like giving you a rough idea the next video the future videos i would definitely include uh like uh these medications and the mechanism of actions of this medication on like how they function and all so that you would actually understand what you have read from and uh, what you have like uh, like watched from this video okay so that's all from this video thank you